I went on a trip with 14 diamonds and it was so cool because I was able to kind of just sit back and listen and observe and just kind of hear um, a, about people and their business and the way that they operate. Um, one second. So one of the things I also got to do is I got to read this book. I got this book for a few of my level ones. And if you haven't started reading it yet, if you don't have this, I tell you, go and get it. It's called Dream Big by Bob Goff. And I just highlighted so much of it um, throughout my trip. Um, it was really, oh gosh, sorry, y'all. If you are not muted, go ahead and mute yourself just so there's not feedback. But anyways, um, on this trip, I really observed a whole lot while um, really filling my cup with this book. One of the things that I noticed is that when people have an attitude of gratitude, as silly as that may sound, they like their job better. They appreciate um, their job. They appreciate this opportunity. And that trickles down to their team. And that appreciation creates this passion and this excitement that feeds into other people. And so I want to encourage you guys, if you're at a place where maybe you're feeling like defeated or you're feeling like you're not having much fun, go back to what you were doing that was fun with this business. Go back to that moment, like go back and remember where you were and what you were doing when you were having fun with this business. Does that mean reconnecting with people and just doing relationship building? Then do that, but also be intentional. Don't just do that. Be intentional with what you're doing, but be others focused. One of the things that I really, really loved, and I'm going to read this to you guys, and I'm probably going to plaster this all over our team page because I thought it was so beautiful. It goes hand in hand with what we are really focusing on this month in May. We're doing Mindfulness May slash Gratitude May. We're really focusing on helping and serving others. And I feel like as a team, we've been really, really making that a priority over the past couple of months. And I know many of you are yellow. Many of you are in the medical field. Many of you are huge like Enneagram 2 helpers. And I think that this shift in our business is going to really, really bless your soul. But um, Bob Goff is talking here about ambitions. Um, I encourage you to go get this book. But he says, make sure you set your compass in the right direction, always pointing toward the things that will last and make an impact in the lives of others. You'll know you're moving toward beautiful ambitions if you're in your life if you find yourself wanting beautiful things for the people around you. Your greatest sense of fulfillment will come in the service of others, not yourself. And so I want you guys to remember that your greatest sense of fulfillment is going to come in serving other people, not being you focused. And so that's what I was getting at from my trip this weekend, seeing like when you are serving other people, when you are making this about others and you're having fun cultivating those relationships and helping others. There's something really special that comes with that. And so I want you guys to hold on to that. And I want you guys to go back to taking your mind off. I want to get points. I want to get ranks. I want to, I want to grow. I want to grow. Take your mind off of yourself and start serving other people. And there's going to be so much fulfillment in that. So transitioning to serving other people, I am so excited about our guest tonight because I know so many people on our team are very, very passionate, like I said, about helping other people. I don't know how we did it, but we have like a whole team of physician, physical therapists. <laughs> and so I know that you guys are going to relate so much to my friend, Jamie. I actually have never met Jamie face to face, but she has been somebody that has been very, very kind and very encouraging and very just like supportive and just a very beautiful friend. Um, and so I'm really excited for you guys to hear her story. She's going to share a few top tips. And then if you guys have any questions and we have some time at the end, um, hopefully we can do some Q&A. So Jamie, go ahead and take it away. So thankful you're here. Thank you. I just um, downloaded that um, book on Audible 
as you were talking about that. So I'm super excited. I love Bob, Bob Goff. And um, okay, thanks for having me. I just have to preface this by saying that even as a diamond gold, <laughs> I am still super nervous just about speaking and sharing. And I'm like a true introvert <laughs> at heart. Um, but I love people and I love to serve people. And this opportunity and these products have completely changed my family's world. And so I wanna just share with you about that. And then I wanna just stick to the basics tonight. I was thinking about, okay, what do I wanna talk about? And, um, and I wrote down six actions to create growth. And so a lot of times people will say, okay, what, what did you do to get to diamond? Like, and diamond gold, like, what are you doing? And it really is so simple. It's doing the simple things consistently. And um, like you mentioned, like your passion and your energy, like to me, energy is everything. Even if I'm having like not a good moment or day, I have a toolbox that I can go to before I do my connections, before I do my reach outs, then I can get myself in a better brain space and just raise that vibration, like raise that energy. Um, for me, it's like worship music and just kind of, you know, lifting it up, um, moving my body, things like that. But um, so I'll share a little bit about my story. I'm not going to get into my whole health story, but it's like pretty dramatic. So um, I have, I worked as a doctor at physical therapy. So shout out to all you guys, <laughs> physical therapists out there um, for 10 years. And I worked in an outpatient orthopedic center. My um, specialty is orthopedics. I did women's health um, pelvic floor work for a while. Um, went to Michigan State University and, and were, um, through their the osteopathic uh, program and did some classes there. And so I did a lot of like manual medicine. I love the profession, but, um, and tell me if you guys can relate with this, but I was burnt out. Like I was mm, tired of going to the clinic all day and then just charting patient charts at night because we weren't given paperwork time. And I just felt like I didn't have any energy. PT burnout is real, Lauren, absolutely. And, and um, I think all healthcare right now, especially, but I was, I had reached the, the top of the ceiling for our, um, just what I could be making, you know, cause I'd worked there 10 years. I was helping run one of our small satellite clinics, like co-managing the clinic. And um, I was praying like for an opportunity where I could still help people and I could still help people in wellness. And then I live in the Northeast, I live in Maine. Um, and um, Lyme disease is pretty, um, like uh, ticks are pretty abundant here. And so I had gotten Lyme disease and pretty sick for a while. And it wasn't until that, until I actually was, you know, had gone from super like healthy and active to like, you know, I was in bed for, um, there was a time where my husband actually had to help me in the bathroom. It was like really crazy. <laughs> and that really made me look at life differently. And so I started Plexus, like after I had gone through, you know, several doctors, I had gone to uh, uh, functional medicine as well and had felt better, but was still really struggling. And so I had just prayed like, um, and I really, really believe that this was an answer prayer in so many different ways. And so I started the products and literally my health began to change. Like they had put me on thyroid meds. I got off meds. My hair stopped falling out. Like my rashes went like crazy health story. So it was at that point that I like wanted to share this with other people. And I hadn't yet like caught the vision. I hadn't yet realized like, oh, this is a potential, you know, financial freedom, like opportunity for financial freedom to make a huge impact. And I remember going um, silver and it, it wasn't, we, we make more now for going silver than we did back when I started. I think it was, what was it like $175 for going silver when I started five years ago. And I remember I'm like, okay, wow, that's like, that's pretty good money for just like sharing for a few people. So, you know, I'm going to look at this compensation plan and I looked at it and, you know, I, I said like to myself and my husband, I said, I can really help a lot of people with this. And this might be my answer. And I decided like, so when I draw my line in the sand, um, that's it. Like I am not a quitter. I am every roadblock that I face is a chance to grow. Like that is how I look at like resistances or 
you know, if, if something's not working, I'm like, okay, I'm, I must, I need to do something differently. Like I need to go watch, go on YouTube. I need to go to a training. I need to um, just like pray for um, open doors and where, where to grow. And so I decided to go all in um, went gold. And then um, I think that was April and then May senior gold at leaders retreat and then double ranked Ruby senior Ruby that February, March, and then went Emerald in um, June. And it was so crazy. Like I just was reaching out to so many people, like mostly Sunday nights and Monday nights, I would do my reach outs. And then um, if a patient went to the bathroom, I would like follow up, I'd message, I would um, lock my treatment door instead of charting, I'd be like reaching out and following up and like, um, and I would still get my charts done at the end of the day. But so anyway, so this, um, not only did the products change my health, but um, one of my big whys, one of my big dreams was to have another baby. And so I have a 10 year old and I have a one year old. And my husband had just said like, because of the way I was feeling and um, just, you know, he had a pretty successful business, but I was still like just spending lots and lots of money on help my health. And we just weren't in a place to have another child. It just wasn't really an option. So he had told me, that's it. We're, we're done. One and done. And so that crushed me. Like, and I said, no, like, I don't take no for an answer. I don't take no for an answer when people tell me they don't need flexes. And I don't take no to my husband. He says, we're gonna have one baby. So <laughs> I just literally would listen to diamond docs on the treadmill and like cry and like be so inspired. And like, if you aren't doing that, like, if you're not inspiring yourself daily, like go do that, like testimonies, like diamond docs. I'm like, no, like I'm going to go diamond. I'm going to change his heart. We're going to, you know, move into a new house. We're going to have another baby. And, um, we did, and we bought this beautiful new home. We have a beautiful child, which he is so grateful for and says, you know, I can't imagine our lives without. And so thank you, God. Right. So dream, like whatever it is for you, like go after it because this can be a vehicle to help so many people. And it can be a vehicle to help you accomplish whatever you want. And it may not be diamond. It may be, you know, making a thousand dollars a month and helping a few friends like that is so doable. And so I want to share, um, if you guys know, Christy Jex, like she shared this with me and I just want to share it for you and I'm going to um, type it up and I'll send it to you and you can post it. But, um, something that I look at and something that I read and it is, um, it is, um, an affirmation. It's a long affirmation, but I'm going to read it. Um, so I'm consistently doing the work. I facilitate growth and wins. I am always creating connections with new people. I foster relationships and create an exceptional experience with those who trust me with their help. And through this grows, um, into shout outs, into sharing and into silvers. I am the generator of events and I confidently educate people. I am a professional inviter and I enjoy the process of nourishing my own results, others results. And I trust the process of nourishing my funnel. I love myself and I love others well, and I'm committed to do work for better or for worse. My family is blessed beyond measure because of this. I am grateful for working for um, my highest good. And so that is just so powerful. Um, and that affirmation encompasses or embodies um, like everything that we do, right? Like we are consistent. We are, we're gonna, we're gonna break that apart. Um, and so with this, when this was shared with me, like, um, I just felt so like empowered and just so like peaceful. Um, my journey has not always been peaceful. Like I have learned, um, um, along the way to do this with more alignment instead of like, you know, just go at it 150% and with chaos. I really believe that we can work this business, have busy lives, be moms, be, you know, husbands, whatever. And, and do whatever we want to do and create the space because it, it really is simple. This business is so simple and it, it is, we create like, I mean, I'm just, I'm speaking for myself. I don't know if you guys do, but sometimes we create so much mental drama for ourselves around like doing the things instead of like, like you've mentioned in the beginning, taking a step back. And this is what we're talking about in our team this month and focusing is just doing the basics. Whenever I feel overwhelmed, it's because I usually don't have a plan, but it's also because I'm creating this mental drama and I just need to go back to the basics of like, I'm going to post, I'm going to make a list and reach out and I'm going to follow up and I'm going to invite to an event. And if there's not an event, I'm going to create one. I'm going to ask, you know, 
for there's a lot of great templates like around or I'm going to just host a 15 or 20 minute zoom and you know and we'll talk about that too so um with that affirmation there um, are just six things that I want to quickly mention you've probably heard this so many times but I just felt like in my heart to share this because if you're feeling discouraged defeated overwhelmed or you're just relaunching yourself like that's the blessing of plexus is we can always just jump back in and relaunch ourselves right um and it is it is about doing these things and so um the first one is your consistent um i don't like to call them ipas i call them dabs like daily action baby steps but it is really when you're asking people um you know we are professional inviters and just our goal is to create conversations and that's it. And to ask people if they're open to hearing more, would they watch a video? Would they attend an event? You know, are, what is their need and how can I um, cast that vision for them? How can I get them to just hear a little bit? Because I know if I can get them to hear a little bit and get that door open, then I can keep, you know, planting seeds and, and building that relationship and like, you know, and it takes time. And so asking people and then following up and we, we don't wanna leave people hanging. Um, and we don't want to just expect people to come into our space. Um, I actually was a no for months and my sponsor just kept following up with me and following up with me and sending videos. And she had sent me a video of a nurse who had had Lyme and it totally, like I started binge watching testimonials after that. And I'm like, wow, this is more than like, weight loss, this is about gut health and inflammation and this is overall wellness. And like, so, so, you know, I just really following up and showing up and doing the work, posting consistently just about your life and about Plexus, you don't even have to say Plexus, but just posting in your stories, posting consistently. People on my team ask me like, well, what do I post about? I typically, tr I try to help my new ambassadors like, like create their first post and then follow up posts. And then I say, okay, write down three things that you are passionate about and start with that. You know, maybe, you know, you create a theme for yourself for the week. Like maybe two Wednesdays about like wellness, Tuesdays about like um, a top tip or how, whatever your value you have to add, you know, Monday is like mindful motivation, whatever, like, you know, just kind of give them ideas and like posting and do this. I still do this for myself too. And I am not a master at social media, but I have been super consistent in my posting and my stories um, since day one. And it's like a marriage, like reaching out to people and posting. It's like, it's a marriage. We can't do one or the other because people are going to start when we connect with them, they're going to start looking at um, your posting and vice versa. I've had people reach out, never like a post and say, okay, I want to get started. Like, what do I do? I just noticed that you posted the story about this or like the energy that you're having in the afternoon. Like I can say postpartum this time, like I have had amazing energy, so grateful for active and slim. Um, but the doing these daily activities is just doing the work, right? And, and showing up five to six days a week. And when we treat this like a business, you're going to earn business, like professional income. You're going to earn um, income when we you know, when we do a little bit, you know, okay, you can probably make some extra money, help a few people, but when you actually do the things consistently, like there's abundant blessings. Um, and like life is busy. And like, I have at times used excuses and, you know, this past year having a new baby, I'm like, nope, I, this is a great time to have, to build my business. Like just having a baby, you know, hours of breastfeeding, you know, instead of like, uh, you know, using that as an excuse and just figuring out a new normal, um, you know, thrown into homeschool and, you know, having a baby. I'm like, you know, I can still do this. And thank you, Plexus, for, for you know, that you, it's come into my life, especially during last year. Um, so how can you carve out whatever time you need? So I help people, I ask them, like, when they start, what, how much time do you have? Or how much time are you willing to, to give? Like, what are your goals? And I help them align, like, their time spent with what they want. Usually new people, um, 30 minutes to 60 minutes a day is pretty good to, to get that time with, um, out of them and, um, just showing them, you know, what to do. Um, but just going back to the consistent activities, just keep those conversations going. The last thing I'll say about that is when people come to me and they say, you know what, I'm, I'm sharing, but I'm not like signing anyone up. I'm like, okay, 
walk me through this. Like we call it the exposure process. I can share a graphic with you about that, but um, I see that the time that they're planting the seeds and making a recommendation and the time that they're actually following up and asking if they're ready to do it, there's a, there's a, a space there. There's too much time there. You have to create a sense of urgency. When somebody is interested, I am all over that. I am asking questions and I am like, by nighttime, they have a recommendation in their inbox. <laughs> they're on the phone with me or I know that takes a lot of time and we're busy, but I do like to sign people up over the phone because I can get them to look at other products. I can get them to look at other welcome packs. I can show them their referral link. I can ask them if they've thought of anybody. Like you're just kind of, you can plant a lot more seeds that way. Um, and then you get them in there and you get them empowered so they can start looking around. And um, a lot of times, like if I, well, if I don't do that and I sign them up, like by the time they get their products, I want them to log in so we can go through that as well. So either, either way. Um, but, um, keep conversations going and, and do it with a sense of urgency. Like, even if they're not ready, you have created that strong, um, you've planted that strong seed. You have listened to them. You have asked questions. And if they don't respond, even during that process, like with questions, like I'm still following up with them. And if they still don't respond, then I'm just loving on them. I'm commenting on their social media. I'm just asking other questions and just trying to be their friend. Um, and so you can just, you know, um, you know, feel, get a feel for, for where that person is at, but, um, you are like generating the action. And so the more people you reach out to, the more people that are going to be ready, the more you're following up with people, the more people that are going to join you. And it's like, I don't like to say it's, I mean, it really is a numbers game. It's not in our hearts like that, but it is when you're reaching out to people. Um, it's just the more people you talk to, the more people that are going to jump on, um, on board with you. And so, um, the, these are the simple things that I have literally done consistently, um, to get to diamond, to get to goal, to build another goal team. So when you, when you reach a certain point in the company, you have the opportunity to, to sign up under yourself again. And, and grow another um, team, which is so incredible. And so it's been really fun growing this gold team the second time around. I've do, done things so differently than I did in the beginning, but I'm still doing the basic things. I'm just doing them a little bit differently. I have a bigger toolbox now. But, and then, so putting this into action, um, make a list. I always have a list going. I'm always adding to that list. Um, make a huge list if you're, you know, new or if you're, um, you know, I always have a hot 20 list. So I have my front page of my notebook is like hot 20. And then I have another list people that I'm going to bless in 2021. And, um, I really pray, like put people in my life that need this, like need these products, need this opportunity. My hot 20 list is people that I'm like really engaged with people that have maybe tried a sample. I try, I don't do a lot of samples, honestly. I just try to get them to do the whole thing, but people that have responded, liked, shown interest, talked to me a little bit, like that is my hot list. And I'm like all over that. And one of my, I'll share this real quick. One of my, I have a diamond on my team. She started just for the products. When she started, she did not even like the taste of slim. Okay. She was not consistent with her products. I didn't ever think she would even do the business. I just wanted to help her with her RA. She had rheumatoid arthritis. She was on some chemotherapeutic drugs, still struggling. Um, and you know, I, um, they had bought a new house and she was seeing a, a functional medicine and spending a lot of money. And she said, well, this has some good ingredients. Like, I think I'll try this. And she, um, you know, I really worked with her, but the moment she started feeling better, she messaged me. She's like, I was just able to get off the floor without pain. This was like in a, maybe month, end of month two, I think maybe two and a half months I was around there. Um, and so she, um, I just said, great, you know, who else do you know that you can help with this? And I was kind of like, uh, uh, like, I think I was a senior gold when she joined me, but, um, and I never thought she would do the business, but because I loved on her and I just didn't give up on her when she told me she didn't like the slim and she couldn't be consistent. And I just said, if you want this to work, you need to be consistent. Like, how can I help you do that? Like I was really bold with her. She's a diamond, you guys. Like I, it gives me chills. Like um, my other good friend from graduate school, she's a physical therapist. She's retired now from her career as well. She, um, she was about four months. Um, she had lots of GI issues, some uh, scopes in high school. And like, it went way back. Um, I remember her telling me like, 
I can eat dairy now. That was after one month. And she's a sapphire on our team now. Like she wanted nothing to do the business as well. And so um, I say that because it's not just um, it, like loving on people because we want them to have the results, but you don't know who's going to be that next person in your team um, that jumps on and just runs with this with you. Right. Um, and so I just totally digress there, but um, so number two, so, um, write down, go in your virtual office and who I do this every month, like who can I help grow and who can I help rank? Um, so look in your virtual office. I want you to look at everybody. So there's so much fruit in our virtual office. I think we like discount people when we look at them and like, oh, they told me they were interested in sharing, but they're loving their products. Or I want you to look in your virtual office. Do not discount anyone. Get rid of the story you have about them. And, um, reach out to them and, and ask that, you know, just paint the picture. Don't say, do you want to share? Do you want to go silver? Say, Hey, like you've been loving your products and, you know, paint a picture of what it is for them to share with one person. Like, you know, I, I know you've probably thought of people that, you know, would love these products too. make it super simple. And, um, you know, paint that picture, like $35 back or $33 back, you know, and then two more, Hey, if you have two more, who are those Two more friends, you get another two hundred and five dollars or whatever. So each step of the way, like I am painting that picture. Once somebody is silver, I still avoid a lot of the verbiage. I'm like, all right. So if we, you know, does so and so know anybody? Like I'm a big plus one. I want to help everyone get plus one, even if they don't want to share it all. Because most people, when they see like, oh, I made like thirty five dollars or whatever, thirty three dollars. Actually, it's more than that, right? Like this month is more than that, and um, it it just they they're like wow, like, I didn't know that I could do that. And so, um, and just see how easy it is to just share with that plus one. So who can you help grow? Who can you help add one? Um, who can you help rank up, like make a list, um, look in your virtual office, like you are the creator of growth. And, and I promise you, you, you will grow to diamond one person at a time. Everybody matters. Um, and so who are those people? And you can get super creative with this, um, as well. And so look in your back office. Um, if you have events, like you guys have events, you have a calendar, um, get people into events and, um, you know, you can even just reach out and just say, Hey, you know, talk about the event. You know, this is such an awesome tool. I want to make sure you have access to, I love saying that <laughs> just, um, you're going to learn about the products. You're going to be inspired. And guess what? I, know that you've probably thought of a few people who could love these products that you can invite them to like make it super simple and fun. So getting people into events. Um, so doing the things, identifying who you can help grow and rank up plus one always. I mean, this is like my system every single like month I'm like mapping these people out um, growing your network and creating new connections. A lot of times people tell me like, okay, I feel like I've maxed out my connections. Like I don't really know anyone. I've reached out to everybody, which is not true, by the way. Like we all know so many more people than we think we do. And the cool thing is when we bring somebody on, we are bringing on their entire network as well. And so I have been a huge tap rooter. I have built my business on, I mean, I've recruited like many, many level ones, but I've also, um, like been a huge tap rooter. So each leader, I have a notebook, like each leader has a page or two or three, whatever. And so each time somebody comes in their organization, we do a lot of three-way chats. And so each time they see potential, I ask them every single month, like, who do you see potential in? Who's, who's wanting to share? Like, who are these people? And I'm like writing their names down. And so part of like my daily mode of operation is I'm like doing a little tapering. I might pop over to their page and kind of like comment and just introduce myself and, and just make them feel welcome and wanted to the team. Um, and I, I do that with like my runner leaders and, you know, if I'm in a three-way chat, I'm helping troubleshoot as well, things like that. Like those are the kind of names that I write down. Um, but when it comes to growing your network, you have access to a whole network with each person that you bring on. But for you specifically, um, identify who you want to be in this with you. So like when I first started, I would like get everybody, you know, just bring everybody in. Yes, I want to bring everybody in who needs the products who, I mean, I think everybody needs products, but who I know could really benefit from the products. Um, but I also am very um, intentional about like searching for business builders and 
um, identifying like I want somebody who wants a change in their life because I did and, and I am passionate about that. And I know we have the answer. Um, I want somebody who um, is coachable. You know, um, if they're faith filled, awesome. Like, you know, they love the Lord. Like, I know these are certain qualities and um, they like, they need a community, they want a community, you know. So identify what that looks for you, looks like for you. And you can join Facebook groups. I know Instagram is like a whole world, um, but um, you can go through and just make a list of people that really come to mind that you think would be um, good at this, who need this, who need a change and star those people on your list and reach out to them. And I just reach out and I just really am authentic and I just share, I don't beat around the bush. Like I don't try to build a relationship first. I just say, if I haven't talked to him in a long time, I'll tell him like, Hey, I know we haven't talked a long time, but you've been on my mind because of this. Like you've been on my heart because of this. And like, I've been so excited what I've been learning about, you know, I couldn't, you know, wait to reach out to you for whatever reason. And depends on the person, you know, I know that you love help. I know that you love to inspire people. And, um, I know that you love what I do. <laughs> and so the worst thing they can say is no. And I have friends that have told me no, and they're still my friends and that's okay. And, and I just being, yeah, being bold and being authentic and, their wheels are going to still start turning because even if they're like put up that block, like I did in the beginning, like, Nope, I don't want this. Um, and their wheels are going to start turning and we can still love on them and plant seeds and, and so forth. And, um, you know, if you have been at this for a while and really feel like you've maxed your, you know, your market, I mean, there's, you can join some Facebook groups, like whatever you're passionate about, like, um, homeschooling groups or exercise groups or whatever, and just start adding value in those groups. Like just start adding value. I have a couple new team members that I met um, in PT groups and I know how those can be, but I've been pretty kind of, I've been pretty active in those anyway. And um, one of them is just running with us and she's a rehab director, but she's like really burnt out, loves the product. She's lost a lot of weight. She feels so good. She's like had so much energy and she's like, wow, this is really amazing stuff. And so, um, you can meet people in groups that way. Um, I want you to get fired up about creating new connections. I want you to remove any blocks that you have about growing your network. It's not scary. It's exciting. It's fun. Even for me, I'm an introvert and get out there and go make new connections. Like every single day or pick a couple days a week where you go out and make new connections. And you never know who's going to join on for the products and run with the business. Like that was me. Like I had no intention of running with the business until I found out that it was really an answer to prayer and like so many reasons. But, um, so the next thing, I just have a couple more things. So the next thing is who is already here. So as you move into your mindful and you're, we're, we're um, really working on just gratitude this month as well and loving on our, um, our current customers, our current ambassadors, and sometimes we focus too much on who's coming in the door and not enough of like taking good care of our people. Even the people with partial PV, they are loving those products. We are going to love on them. And of course, Remo is going to try to, you know, share what I think that they should be taking or introduce new things or tag them in new posts. Um, I have a new ambassador that I've been talking to for so long about she, she has lupus. She needs the products. And nope, no, no, no. And then I post about collagen and she's like, I'm in, where do I order? I sent her the site. She did it right. Like, okay, it's great, but I want you to do take the product. So, so anyway, so she ordered that and I've been, um, tagging her and I tagged her in an ease and I messaged her. I said, Hey, just tag you in a post. So ease. And I just thought how much it would really help you or, you know, some things she's been dealing with with lupus. She messaged me back. She's like, Oh, well, where do I, like, how do I do this? And so I talked her through it and she ordered it. So it's, sometimes it's kind of like people you could, you know, need gut health like all day long, but then they want the, you know, the collagen, she did slim in the collagen. And then you can um, expose them to more things. And I still am going to be, you know, I treat every new ambassador, like they haven't even joined me yet. Like for, you know, at least for the first month, like I want to keep exposing them to new things because sometimes what they start with isn't what they're going to continue with. And I tell people that when they order, you know, this is what I think you would benefit from right now, but 
you know what, we may switch things up and, you know, are you okay with that? Are you willing to work with me or whatever? Do you trust me? Whatever, something, whatever, whatever, um, you get what I'm saying. But, um, so loving on people who's already in your, like in your virtual office, take good care of your people, send them videos, um, help them feel seen and loved. Like last thing I'll say about that is every Wednesday I carve out time to love on people. I send my team some gifts or cards. Um, I just, you know, just ask them how they're doing. Like I just do check-ins. I do just a lot of like loving on teams, sending encouraging messages. I just kind of carve out time for that. Um, and you will find, so like part of what fuels me and I'm sure all of us is when we hear those good stories, <laughs> cause we, you know, it's just, it's like, wow, we're really making um, a difference. And so the more you're loving on your team, the more stories you're going to hear. And you're going to create opportunities to, um, to get shout outs. So let me tell you what that means. So um, whenever I hear something positive from somebody, I ask them to write down, like just write up a quick paragraph about that and make a post um, or a shout out, like sh shout, and shout out and tag me. If they're not comfortable, I'll have them put it in our, like we have a customer page and I'll have them put it in there. Um, and so, um, I just ask them, would you mind writing up a quick paragraph? And I would love to share this with our team. They would be so inspired by your story. And then I go into chats and I just say, Hey, so-and-so just made a post. Will you guys like, you know, our leaders like, um, comment. And so, um, create, um, ways to do shout outs. Everybody loves recognition and, um, people will work harder for recognition than raises. And so, um, you can even shout people out if they don't want to write it up. Like I'll go on our team page. Hey, do you mind if I shout you out? Like so and so, and then I just write up something on our team page. Um, so whatever that looks like for you, create space to um, just love on your people, whatever that looks like for you. It may be sending messages. It may be sending cards. It may be um, doing a shout out, you know, whatever um, that looks like T page. Um, yeah, exactly. If they don't want to do it publicly, that's totally fine on their personal. I'll maybe have them put it in their stories because it disappears. And if they're still not comfortable, then I'll have them put it in um, our customer page or team page um, or whatever. So yeah, just have them put it in our, our private Facebook group. Um, and um, so number five, so write down who, who can I create an event for? Um, I love, and this, this actually is like, has been out of my comfort zone, like, but I have done them and I've made myself comfortable. And, um, you can, if you're not comfortable, you can grab your sponsor or the, you know, next working ambassador on your team or a sideline or anybody, um, that you can do an event with, um, a zoom, a Facebook event, um, creating these smaller events for your people. And we, we have, we offer bigger events to our teams but there's so much power in like you hosting an event yourself and getting comfortable with doing that because people are going to show up. It's a different energy, right? Like your people are going to show up for like you versus like, Hey, my friend, so-and-so is hosting event. But if you're like, Hey, I'm hosting this, even if it's like two people, like the, we do a lot of like smaller, um, smaller zooms. And you're also empowering yourself, you're empowering your people and you're increasing opportunities to get them out of their comfort zones or you getting out of your comfort zone. And so leadership is about getting people to take ownership. And so when people take ownership, they show up, right? So I promise you, if you do this, you'll, it'll create like a different energy. If you're, you know, use your team events for sure because there's power in that community but also create like smaller events for yourself. I have an example I can send, um, Emily too, that she can share with you guys, if you want to watch it and just see how one is run. Um, and so you could, um, go to your back office, make a list of those people that are loving their products. And you could say, you know, I know you're loving your products. I would love to do a 20 minute zoom with three to five of your friends. Um, there's so much fun with having friends do this with you. Are you open to doing that? And what you do in the calls is you just educate you, um, you, share your story. You share a little bit about what the products do, and then you give a call to action, which is like, you know, ready to do this, like, um, and that's it. And then, um, 
the last thing is who can I get to an event? So who can I create an event for, but who can I also get an event to? We kind of talked about that a little bit, but events really expand people's vision. And we are here. That is like what we do is to cast vision for people and invite people to hear more, invite people to see other people's stories. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know what they don't know, right? They don't know that Plexus helps migraines. They don't know like that it can do all these things. They don't know that they can, you know, earn an amazing income. It, um, so I would say make that list, but also write a hot 20 list about who you can invite to your list. So who's your hot 20 that you are to an event that you can invite to yourself. And um, so in that affirmation that I'll share, I am consistently doing the work. I facilitate growth and wins. I'm always creating connections with new people. I foster relationships and create exceptional experience for those who trust me with their help. And this grows into shout outs, into sharing, into silvers. I'm the generator of events and I confidently educate people. I am professional inviter and I enjoy the process of nourishing my own results, other results, and I trust the process of nourishing my funnel. I love myself and I love others while I'm committed to this work for better or worse. My family is blessed beyond measure because of this and I'm grateful for working for my highest good. So through this affirmation, through this opportunity, you have the ability to serve whatever that looks like. We have the ability to add value to people. And when, when we are having fears, which is a whole different call, um, it's usually about our own self. And so whenever I'm feeling kind of that icky feeling or like a fear that I have felt like I've had all the fears, I'm sure that you guys have as well. Um, you're going to feel those fears in anything in life. It's just easier to avoid them in other places outside of this industry. But when you are faced head on with them, you can dig into those and like, why am I feeling that way? And really like, just work through that. It usually comes back to we're focused on ourselves and not others. Right? So if you are outwardly focused and you are not focusing on yourself, then you are focusing on like, I have a plan. Like I have a purpose, I have a vision to make an impact. And I know I have 500% belief in these products and their ingredients and this company and, um, all the things. And so you can make a huge impact and it is truly the best thing ever. And you can have so much fun with it. Um, and I've learned to have so much more fun. Um, I can totally get into work mode and just like work, but it is so much fun. The trips, the community, I know we've all been feeling probably that lack of or less community the past year, but but it's, you know, it created. And so all the things, um, it's just been a, just a huge blessing and anything that you want, a last thing I'll say is go after it with no fear, <laughs> like write it down, pray about it, do your things, do your posting, do your connecting, getting people to events, do all these things that we talked about and you can go as far as you want to go. So, um, that's all I had to share, but if you guys want to ask questions, I can stay on for a little bit. Jamie, you prepared so much for this call. Like you took a lot of time to prepare for this. And that means so much to us because you not only like gave us inspiration and you shared a little of your story, but you gave like really great tangible tips. Um, and I love that. I love so much that you are like preaching about the basics because that is so what it is but the thing is that we get bored with the basics we get bored because it's monotonous and it's the same thing over and over again and we feel like well maybe we should go and try something else or whatever and you avoid the things that are going to get you to where you wanted to start or where you wanted to be from the beginning and so you know it, it's just so important for us all to hear she is not doing anything special. She is an introvert. She was working full time, but she was doing the basics. And if you don't remember what the basics are, I love how you talked about it being a marriage between posting and um, reaching out. Like that's a marriage. You can't do one without the other because that creates that credibility. That's the basics. You're posting, you're inviting by reaching out you're training yourself and you're finding that inspiration and building that belief. Like that's what it is. And so we could sit here and say it over and over and over again. But sometimes we get bored. So stop getting bored. And I love what you said about 
do be, be more intentional in reaching out because the more you're reaching out and the more you're doing customer care, the more stories you're going to hear. And the more stories you're going to hear, the more passionate you're going to become because you're going to know, okay, these products are helping Brittany with this, Nancy with this, Hannah with this, Caitlin with this, Joanna with this. And that's going to make you want to go and share because your belief is now sky high because you've been pouring into others and you've been taking a step back from yourself. So good. So very good. Let's um, save room for like maybe one question because I know that it's late where a lot of you are and I want to I want to value and respect your time because we do have a little bit of accountability right after this. Does anybody have a question for Jamie? I do. Thanks, Jamie. That was really great. Um, how would you say or like what was the turning point for those people who you signed who were not interested in the business at all to get them to either see the vision? I know you said you loved on them well and you celebrated their wins and you just kept pouring into them. But was it like a them seeing their own results or them, you know, going through like a crisis in their life? Or what was it that kind of do you feel propelled them forward to become diamonds and sapphires now? Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. And I, I think it really starts from the beginning and just um, help having your follow-up system on how you're supporting them with the products and, and just really getting to know them as a human being. Like, I mean, I literally write down like their kids' names and like, I want to get to know them at their core and where, where they're at. Like, and that through that process, like I will, I will find out more and then I can cast that vision for them. And it's not for everybody, but you know, um, and I, again, I had no idea Abby would run with this when she started. That wasn't my intention at all. Um, but they had bought a new home and they were struggling financially. She was an art teacher. Husband's a works in the hospital, um, in the ER. And, um, you know, I just, I did not give up because I wanted her to have the results in the products. I'm like, you've got to work with me. And then um, I knew that she couldn't like afford to be on all the products. And so, you know, it's, it's just baby steps. It really is just getting to know the person and having your system. Like I, I do very similar things with every single person. I just might do it quicker with some and slower with the others. You know what I mean? But it's really just like loving on them, building that trust. And then, um, casting that vision for them by baby steps. Like, Hey, one person is this two more is $205 more. Like show them, you know, like the comp or the income graphic, you know, send them diamond docs, like baby steps, like every, okay. So, um, every time I follow up with somebody, so like when somebody joins me, I sign up, I write them in my calendar every three days for the first week, uh, weekly for the first month, every two weeks for 90 days. And then every time I follow up on their products, I'm sending them something that's going to inspire them, keep their belief going. Like I'm going to tag them in another story. Like I align building belief with my check-ins on how they're doing their products. So I think it just kind of starts from like the beginning and casting the vision. And just like I told Andrea, like she's a sapphire. Um, and she, um, I just told her like, you know, I obviously wanted you to start their products, but I obviously want you to do the business me too, because I mean, she's a good friend. So I can just tell her that, but um, I just, I know that this could change things for you and your family. I know you guys want a, um, another home, like a new home. Like I just, I know these things about her. So I like say these things, like this is possible for you, you know? And she didn't really start growing until she saw Abby and I running and she's like, I want in on this, <laughs> you know? So I think just like loving on your people, getting to know them, like what is their need? And then you be proactively like casting that vision for them. Does that help? Does that make sense? Does that help? That is awesome. Aligning, align building belief with your check-ins. That is so great. What are some examples of that? Like when you're doing that first month of check-ins, I really liked how you said your first month as an ambassador, you're treating them like they haven't even joined by like pursuing them and sharing testimonials. What other particular things are you sending with these check-ins? So we have a, um, a, a story, a, pay, a testimonial like page, it's called your health and happiness. And we just have lots of stories in there. So I'll um, copy the link to certain stories and send it in their messenger. And like, you know, I saw this and I totally thought of you, or, you know, sometimes I'll tag them in that when, when they start, I ask them like how they like information. Do you like to read? Do you like to listen to 
things like what is do you do you want me to text you or Facebook message okay like I just find out what that looks like for them and then I'll send it like a story I'll go find a video like or a diamond doc that I think that they will like and I'll send that um if they are struggling with like if their goal is like weight loss or something um I'm also asking them about like um, just what their food is. I might share, I mean, I don't get into like too much detail about that because it's not really our role, but I'll share like tips about that. Like I usually tag people in tips about drinking water, <laughs> like simple stuff. Like, um, here's some protein ideas, like some protein, you know, I just kind of like find out what their goals are and I'm like sending them extra, like adding value, I guess, extra things to add. Does that make, yeah, does that make sense? But stories, stories are super powerful. I mean, that's what got me going. <laughs> like that is what got me to say yes is stories. This will be the last question that I have. But with that, you you said that you weren't interested until you watched that video that she sent of the nurse. Um, were you like, giving her permission to send you stuff? Were you responsive to her? Or was she just like, hey, Jamie, I know you aren't interested, but I you know, saw this thought of you and like, was she continually doing that without your approval or were you in yeah, communication was, with her? Like, it do, I don't really get annoyed easy, but I was annoyed. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, it's funny because she would send me, remember, like you guys probably, don't, I don't know if you've been around for like five years, but we had the, like the, it was so ugly, like the black and pink, like um, slim logo, like <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so great. <laughs> the transformation and marketing, but um, so she just started sending me all about slim and like, I hadn't yet really shared with her all about like what I was dealing with. And, um, so she just kept sending me like slim and her website. And I'm like, what in the world is this like, <laughs> you know, but I, I mean, I respect her. She was a teacher and a Montessori teacher in my town, very well liked, very good teacher. Um, and so I, I just, I remember her, like, I think it was maybe like month three, it was a while after she was sending me stuff. And I was, I'm, I'm like a polite cricket. Like I do respond. I'm like, Oh, thanks so much. I'm all set. You know, I'm not like, I don't ignore, you know, yeah. sometimes, you know, if I forget if I'm busy, but I try to just be polite with things, but like that. But, um, she, the, she, it was months after and she messaged me like, you know, can I ask you like, you know, what you're more about your health. And, and I told her, I said, yeah, I've been treated for Lyme disease and like, it was um, whatever. And um, so then that's when she sent me the video. And then I was like, oh, and then I started binge watching. It was before, like, it was when um, there were just, we could watch anything on YouTube. Like now things are more compliant, um, but it was back when we can just watch anything. And I, so I binge watched videos um, over and over, so. But yeah, I was, I was a little irritated um, <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> well, it but. seemed to work. It seemed to work. There are things we can learn from here, things to do and things not to do. But ultimately, just having that care and that consistency and knowing, like, I really believe in Jamie and I really believe in these products and I believe that she would really be blessed by them. And I think she would be amazing with the opportunity and just not giving up on that. Well, Jamie, I'm telling you, I know that our whole team just has so many notes, just as I do. Um, thank you so much, seriously, for taking so much time and preparing for this and giving us um, all of your insight and your wisdom and your and your top tips. And I am excited to see that example of the event that you do and your graphics and the affirmations. That way I can share it with our team. Um, and uh Everybody else, stay on for just a second more for accountability group. Jamie, thank you so much. Um, I'll be sending you a little sweet treat in the mail as a thank you for, for doing this. Um, you guys, if you are still on accountability group, stay on. If you're not, we will see you guys very soon. So accountability people, stay on for just a second. Thank you all for being on the call. Okay, if you are not in accountability, you're welcome to stay, but if you're not in accountability, you guys are welcome to drop off while we're waiting. Um, what was what was the takeaway that you guys got from that? Feel free to unmute yourself. I, I, did you guys enjoy that? Was that good? What was the takeaway that you that you personally took away? I love when she talked about um 
like stop creating mental drama mm-hmm. on a spiritual level. Like there's all of these reasons and then you're flustered and it's like, no, that's like not true and never happened. And nobody said that. So like, just yes. let it go. Yes. I love that. That was a great one. And I loved when she talked about, um, you know, really pouring into her new people and guiding them. Um, I've been really blessed with having Jamie Morris guide me and having Shelby Fobister guide me, but I don't think that I've really quite done as well with that on my own. And so summer's coming, teaching's going to be over in 22 school days. Not that I'm counting. No one's counting. (laughs) uh, But yeah, then I can pour into what I need to pour into. And give yourself grace because I think customer care is something that probably all of us struggle with. I think that that is something that um, it's very easy for us to sign people and then kind of stop that pursuit and just hope and pray that they have a really great, you know, experience and they fall in love with the products and they want to go and share, but oftentimes that doesn't happen. And so give yourself grace that maybe you've not been great with customer care because now you can start. Now you can start. I really loved how she talked about taking one day out of the week to really pour into her customers, to do those check-ins, to to add value to them. And I also really love that she made a note of their family names and what they do and just really connecting because that's fulfilling. That's what this job is about. This is a people connecting business. Um, So I really love the intentionality in that. Um, I, I really loved that part too about, you know, really delving into who they are besides what they need. Who are they? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I really liked her specific example. She gave us so many ways of like, okay, this is what I do. This is my process. Um, if you think you've uh, reached the top of your network, here's how you go and create more and just mm-hmm. all the different ideas and actually give a really great concrete advice. Um, it was the theory and the application behind it, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. It was so good. She, I mean, she spent a lot of time preparing for night for tonight. That was amazing. Somebody asked, is it okay to send videos and post to people without asking, or do you think it's better to ask permission? I'm assuming this is to the person you're sending the message to rather than the person who created the video. Um, I definitely, I definitely think that you need to ask before just sending a video, unless let's say I've been talking to Nancy Stevens and Nancy shared with me that she's got these health goals or these specific health issues or whatever. So she shared that with me. So to me, that's her giving me permission. I might say though, hey, Nancy, I just saw this really great story of this, of this, um, child who deals with allergies. I'm totally just making that up. That, that's not Nancy's story. But like, I just saw this really great story of this kid who had struggled for a really long time with allergies. Do you, do you mind if I send you his story? I think that that's really important because that's showing respect for that person. And then you're also seeing kind of what their interest level is. Um, I, I don't think I would go the route that Jamie's friend did of just sending story after story after story without knowing she was interested because I feel like at that point you know I feel like that that's I wouldn't want that like I I I think I would get annoyed personally at that and so I think that's something else to be thinking about as we're sending out our messages as we are engaging with people think about how would I feel if I received this message how would I feel if if Sarah Joe just sent me this video without me showing any interest at all like think put yourself in in those shoes and I think that will help you make it a little bit more personalized too okay any other thoughts any other takeaways I really loved what she said about um growing to diamond one person one person at a time love that yeah that was very takes the points out of it and puts the people back in totally puts the whole purpose so much more back in perspective. So I loved that. Yeah. I love that too, Ab. I loved, she said, we have the ability to serve and help others while making a really big impact. 
Um, and so I think that's where we're going to leave you tonight. We're not going to go into any depth with accountability. We've been on here for an hour, and that's a lot longer than I had planned on us being here. But I think the call was really beautiful. And I think hopefully it will help everybody to have a really solid week of reach outs where they're really, where you all are very focused on others. Um, somebody did ask in our uh, Gold Diggers thread earlier this evening when it comes to. The, the reach out messages and follow up messages that we're doing with accountability, does it have to be specific to Plexus or can it be like a connecting message? I say absolutely, it can be a connecting message. So we were talking about this, I think last accountability, um, you know, for, for me and, and Karen, Hannah, and those of us who've been around for a little bit longer, I think that especially like we've gone through our war market. And so now it's time for us to go back and have those connections, right? Like it's important for us, for, for me, like I, I, if I messaged Katie Bryson four years ago and then I haven't said anything to her since, I don't think I'm going to send her another message four years later without a connecting um, message. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that, again, put yourself in the shoes of that person. How would you feel if Elaine just out of the blue, like she's she's messaged you four years ago, and then again you haven't heard from her in another in another four years, and now she's messaging you again about Plexus? Like, how would that make you feel? Um, but you do want to be intentional with your reach out. So I would I would do my best to do maybe at least half um, specific to Plexus. Challenge yourself to kind of get out of your comfort zone, but then. You know, if you need to do connecting messages as well. Does that answer your question? I don't want to call anybody out, but I hope that that helps answer some questions. Um, Kara, Hannah, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Okay. All right. Well, you guys, um, next week is is next. What is today? Even today is the fourth. Okay. So next week is the tenth, which is Abby's birthday, my sister's birthday. So fun. Um, so we will do accountability call normal time, 7.30 for 30 minutes. Please drop your forms um, Sunday night to Monday morning, and um, we'll see you guys all then. We will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for being on tonight, you guys. Bye.